Hey everybody and welcome to a chat that is happening between me, sat in sunny Sheffield, Pete Everett, and my good old mucker, Mr. Carl Van Dusen. How is it going, Kyle? It's excellent. It's spring. It's full of allergies. The kids are about to be out of school for three months and I got to figure out what to do uh, working from home and having a, a ton of children. So looking forward to these next like week of being able to focus and get things done. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, in the UK, we've got about eight weeks until the summer kicks in. So uh, for the for the kids, at least. So we're, we're still plowing on. We're heads down. We'll take on the work. It's all right. You just send it this side of the pond and we'll earn all the money and you do all the childcare. It's fine by me. Okay, that works. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we were actually scheduled to talk about something else, but we've just been having a bit of a chat because our mate Matt has launched Funnel Packs recently and two things have happened. One is we think it's awesome. And the second is we think that there's loads of other things you can do with it, regardless of it just being funnel packs that it's, um, that it, it, it was sort of designed for. And that's not to say Matt hasn't done an awesome job uh, and Mel, let's give a shout out to Mel. Um, that's not to say they've not done an awesome job with what they've created, but actually with just that little bit more work, we think there's a number of different things that we can, uh, you, you can use it for in your business. So just to maximize on that investment and actually to take on the new packs as they're coming along. So if you start thinking about some of these things as the new packs get released, then actually, you know, you could use some of these ideas for some of the new stuff. So, I mean, mate, first of all, what is, what do you think of funnel packs? How, how, how have you been using it? Yeah. So when, you know, Matt started telling me about this, uh, I don't know, I guess back in like February or March when he first started thinking of it. And I was super excited about it because I did uh, Dave Foy's No Fear Funnel course. I'm a part of that. And uh, I, I really value the concept of building out these funnels for my business. Where I lack is having time to sit down and do all these because I'm doing crap for my customers. And mm -hmm the content creation part. So like the building a landing page, the making a cover, uh, the connecting MailChimp or MailerLite or Drip or whatever you're using, all that stuff is no problem. For me, it's the writing the content. So I would, my past funnels before funnel packs were uh, landing page, lead magnet, nice little PDF. I deliver it to them via email and then that was it. And there was nothing, there was no funnel. It was just a, it was a cylinder, you know? So I just dropped people in and they fell out the other side. <laughs> um, and, and that's just how my funnels were because I wasn't taking all that time to like create all these nurturing emails and like plan this with foresight to what's my end goal. I just made a cool PDF and I wanted to collect emails. So now I have a list of, I don't know, 500 people that have signed up for Ogle stuff. Uh, that I never email. Like I sent them a PDF and then that was it. So for me, the, the, the biggest thing about funnel packs was all this content is already created and it's really freaking good. So uh, I can set up all these nurturing emails in 10 minutes and actually have something to try to engage with these people uh, and actually get them into my business instead of just giving them something for free and walking away. Yeah. I, um, I, I have exactly the same problem and uh, it's, uh, I, the, my, my lead magnets were essentially the same as yours. I've got a few lead magnets on a number of sites, uh, some on our personal, my personal stuff, some on our agency uh, site. And yeah, it was exactly the same. I, um, you know, you offer some great value. You put a lot of work into a blog post or whatever, and there's a download on it and people sign up and they get it. And that's the end of it. And um, my, I've, I've been using it. So the, the funnel pack I was really interested in was the one about courses with having the, the SEO course um, as part one of the products that, that I have to sell. And uh, <laughs> I did put this in the funnel packs community thing. And that's another benefit of funnel packs. I've got to say that community is awesome. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, yeah, I couldn't wait basically for Matt to write the SEO course or the courses funnel. So I took the, um, the web audit funnel, which was the one that was live at the time. There's now an SEO specific one, which might fit a little bit better. I don't know, I haven't looked at it yet. But the I took the web audit one, which had three or four emails about SEO in the sort of seven or eight that are in the pack. And then I wrote kind of some of the others to lead from an existing lead magnet that I already had, which was converting really well because I'd, I'd uh, overtaken moz.com in the organic results. So I was, getting, I was getting downloads on that without a problem. And so I've typed, I uh, tied it for that lead magnet through to the course and people are obviously going through the funnel at the moment to, uh, to, to tie the two together. So 
that's uh, that's currently the the best one I've got live. I have taken literally one out of the box and put it on our agency site, and a couple of people have found it and they're going through it. Um, but uh, I probably need to give that one a little bit more TLC in order just to make it a bit more kind of seem like it's a bit more part of our agency rather than something that I've just kind of bolted on. Um, right. But the uh, with exactly the same as you, I wouldn't have done any of that it had funnel packs and existed because I just didn't have the time to sit with a blank screen and a blank cursor and think, how the heck is this email going to work? Right. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's cool. So you, you actually came up with a few ideas as to other things you've been doing just rather than leading, uh, rather than just creating um, lead magnets, you've come up with some other ideas to repurpose those lead magnets and get people into your funnel in other ways, haven't you? So do you want to, do you want to mention a few of those? Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, that there's, I'm not adding things onto it because it's not enough. It's plenty enough just as a lead magnet and a funnel and getting people in there. But for me, Hey, let's, let's repurpose this and try to get as much use out of it and as many miles out of it as we can. So I actually came up with a list of five different ways you can repurpose these funnel packs uh, besides their intended use. So I guess that makes six altogether, you know? So the, the first thing I've done is I've created a resource library on my website. So um, I think I have a, a, a top level link that says learn and underneath that I have where all my blog posts are and then I have this resource library, right? And I think it says free guides or free downloads or something like that, free resources. Um, so I've basically, it just kind of looks like a blog archive page, but it's all of the funnel packs. Um, and then the old lead magnets I have that have no funnel attached to them. But, you know, you see the little icon of the, the booklet and then the title of it, a little blurb about what it is, and then a link for people to go download it. So my thinking on this is if I just have people kind of cold coming to my website trying to figure out am I a good fit, they go on this page and see that I've written all these, you know, ebooks or guides or whatever, uh, that makes my credibility a whole lot better. You know, I'm not just you know, a guy who can throw together some pages, I'm writing the book on it, you know, even though I'm, you know, just taking Matt's words and pretending I said them, but that's what I bought it for. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, and that's, that's the thing. I, I, I had a chat with Matt the other day. Matt, you're going to get, you're going to cringe when you see this because we're just going to give you all the love when it comes to this. So, you know, you, you're just going to have to, you're just going to have to sit and accept it, to be honest, because you're not a part of this call. So, you know, we're talking about you, not to you. So that's, And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. By the time you know about this, it'll already be online. Thousands of people have seen it. So you can thank us later. The pint's on you. Um, the, but yeah, the, uh, I've forgotten where I was going with this now. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 it comes back down to the, ultimately the time. Um, I know one of the things that, one of the comments that was in the, uh, in the group was that Matt had thought about doing a, um, like blog posts and organic content for this. And um, the problem with that is if we all used the same blog post and we all had the same blog post on our websites, then actually we'd just kill each other from an SEO point of view. So um, right. I can fully understand why he hasn't done that. And that's kind of why actually, I think it's good to think about other ways of getting people into this funnel. Now, one of the, um, one of the other ideas you had was to actually email a link to the funnel pack to your um, either existing customers or leads that you had that had kind of gone cold to re-engage the conversation, hadn't you? So I think that's a really good way of doing it as well. So do you want to sort of talk about how you've been using that? Yeah, so I kind of broke that into two different things because I'm using them a little bit different. So the first one is emailing it to existing customers. So I keep a list of everybody that I've done work for. Some of them are on care plans, some of them are not on care plans, but I want to try to at least have some kind of connection with those people and reach out to them every once in a while. My problem is, is uh, you know, maybe I set a date on the calendar and uh, I need to reach out to everybody and say hi. Well, then I just send an email that says, hey, how's business? How are things? Can I do anything? And I just look kind of desperate or like I'm fishing for something, you know, and that's kind of how it's always gone. But I still feel like that's better than never talking to them at all. So what I did was actually, um, I put that stuff into my calendar that I needed to follow up with so-and-so customers. And I just wrote to them and said, hey, I just put together this guide. I thought of you. I thought you could get some use out of this for your website. I wanted to email it to you. And I just emailed them the link so they go into the funnel like normal. Um, 
And that way I'm kind of connecting with them, but not just asking them for something. In fact, I didn't ask them for anything. I just said, hey, I have something free for you. Here you go. And I got a ton of response from people saying thank you. Not all of them signed up. Some of them just said thank you, you know, and didn't do anything. But still, I was able to have a reason to make a connection with them again. So I think that was great. The second one was kind of rekindling some cold leads. So uh, kind of in the same way inside my Trello board, I'll keep a, I have a list of all the estimates that I've been working on or proposals I've sent out. Um, and, you know, just sometimes things go cold. And I had one in particular where the customer was really, it, it, it was a good lead. He was ready to get a website. Like uh, he had an existing one. It wasn't performing well. Um, and when we got to kind of the, okay, well, if this isn't doing what you want it to do, what do you want it to do, right? And it kind of got cold from that point. Like he wasn't sure. I sent him some examples. He said, I like this. I don't like that. But I couldn't really get out of him what it is he's wanting. And I think the problem is, is he's a business owner, not a website designer. He really doesn't know what he wants. So I took the um, web design funnel pack and I emailed it to him. It would probably been three weeks since I talked to him. I kind of just wrote the job off, you know. Um, I emailed it to him. I said, hey, listen, I put together this guide on how to plan out building a website. And I thought this would be good for you as you're still trying to figure out exactly what you want to do with your website. And he was super jazzed that I sent this over to him. And that actually got that conversation moving forward again. So I was able to take something I already had, send it to this guy and kind of get that cold lead rekindled again, which I thought was great. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, it, it's, it's dead easy to, f um, to find ways where, look, uh, the thing with funnels is that pe people are obviously, a funnel is, is shaped like that. The, the, the whole point of a funnel is that you're whittling down your ideal customer from the top. You've put lots of leads in the top and the ones that you get out the bottom are your ideal customer. The reality of it is though, is that the sale in a funnel doesn't have to come at the end. It can, it can come part way through. So, you know, for some people, the, the lead magnet, that will be everything that they need to know about a particular topic. And um, because they've already done some research, they've already got some of the background information. They, you know, they're, they're, they're at that consideration stage of the funnel. And your lead magnet is then the thing that tips them over the edge. You send that and hey, Presto, you know what? He's in a place now to, to uh, make those final decisions or progress a project with you. And that's when the sale comes. Other people, the, they will come across your lead magnet right at the start of their research. So they're, they're not even convinced that this is what they want. They're just, you know, testing the water. They, they know they should be doing this or they, they think they might want to revisit their web design or whatever it is. And they come across you and yeah, actually, you know, that's, that would be useful to have. So, but they're going to go a lot further through the funnel to actually get to the other end. Um, some of them may drop out and that's absolutely fine. But the, the, really the point is, is to say that the, the whole thing with funnels is that, you know, it, it can be portrayed that you have to go from here all the way through all of these steps to there to buy. We're actually like, you've just, you've just demonstrated, you know what, somebody might only have to go from there to there and then they're right. ready to buy. And at the end of the day, as the business owner, who cares how far through the funnel they go? As long yeah. as you're getting the sale out of it at the other end, what difference does it matter? Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I mean, having funnels set up on my website isn't the only way I'm getting customers and it's not the only way I'm getting jobs, but it's an additional way. And it's a way that's once it's, once it's set up, it runs itself. So I can be doing all my other types of marketing while all this is happening in the background. And it surprised me several times when I've just gotten a reply to one of the, uh, you know, one of the sequences of emails and I have no idea who this person is. Uh, I've never talked to them before, but they're replying and I'm going back reading the email going, okay, what did I send to them? You know, I, I have to refresh <laughs> myself on what it is I'm talking to them about because like we're, we're, we're having a conversation in their mind, you know, I'm speaking to them, uh, yeah. but I didn't know it was happening, you know? So it's kind of one of those things you got to get kind of reused <laughs> to, which is interesting, but you know, anyway, any way to start a conversation with somebody is a good way. That's that's it, absolutely, and and actually that leads on to another idea that that we had. So so in full transparency, when we started this conversation, you said I've got four ideas for these funnel packs, but I want five. And actually, now what's happened is we've got six because you've got the original use case as well. So we you look, we'll end up by eleven or something. Let, let's hit double figures by the end of this call. <laughs> But what, one of the things we talked about was actually using the funnel packs as kind of giveaways. So um, this could be in-person networking events. It could be at um, 
uh, you know, podcast interviews, uh, videos like this, anything, just put set up a, a new version of the landing page that's on a custom URL that's maybe personalized a bit to the audience that you're talking to. Maybe it's your local BNI group or your, your local business networking group or whatever it is. And when you're giving your elevator pitch, say, look, I've, I've put together this free resource uh, on web design or on, you know, why you need um, to think about security or have maintenance packages on your website, whatever it is. And it's on, you know, Texas, uh, ogleweb.com forward slash Texas BNI. And, right. and then, then it just drops them straight into the funnel. So you're giving that impression of that personalized experience. And actually all you've really done is duplicated the page on your website. Sure. And there's a couple of points on that. So one, yes, I would, you know, it's so easy now with, with page builders and stuff, we can duplicate a page and change that content to be really specific to the audience that's coming to it. And always, always, always try to do that because if you can speak more directly to that person, you're going to have a lot better success on it. So emphasize that. The second thing is, you know, you've done a lot of in-person networking and so have I, um, and so what you find is, and I think this is why some people drop out and why I've kind of dropped out from doing some of it is, is you get the same cast of characters in there every week and yeah. everybody gets up and says the same thing every week and sits back down. And, you know, like a lot of them have like this one minute rule. So you get to stand up and, and have your pitch for one minute. And there'll be the people that stand up for 10 seconds. They say, hi, my name's Joe and I own Joe's Plumbing and sits his butt down and then that's it, you know? <laughs> and so my thing is there's, there's uh, a good point about having some repetitiveness. So every time you get up and speak, they know exactly who you are and what you do. So you got to have that part of your speech kind of locked down. So every time that's just repetition, you want them to be able to recite it for you, you know, and that's something B and I kind of teaches too, is they'll have uh, other people in the group do the other person's elevator pitch because everybody's heard it so much. So that's good. But the thing is, is you're never like continuing that conversation with them. So what I would start doing is, uh, when I was doing a lot of uh, chamber networking, we'd had breakfast every like Tuesday morning and I would uh, talk to them about whatever blog post I had written most recently. So I'd get up, my name's Kyle, I do this, blah, blah, blah. Hey, I just wrote this new uh, article and it's on such and such and you can get to it here. I think it'll really help you. And I was trying to always have something additional to give them. So I think this is the perfect thing to stand up and say, hey, you know, I have this new resource on SEO and you can go check it out and download this free guide. I have it set up just for y'all. Go to this website. I think that's a, a super way to like give something to the people, you know? Yeah, dead right, dead right. And that's, that's really the whole mentality of the lead magnet, isn't it? Is that you're, you're starting to give a bit more value what you get in return for that value is somebody's email address. So you, you, you are thinking about these things that they're a little bit different to a blog post or a little bit different to maybe a podcast that people can access free of charge, but it's got that value that speaks directly to that person in that moment. This is what, this is the top seven things you need to know about X, Y, Z. Now you've just mentioned SEO and at the time of recording this, Matt and Mel have just released their SEO funnel pack for, uh, so if you're not aware of funnel packs or the way funnel packs is working, it initially launched with two packs that were live, which were web design and website audits. Mm -hmm. right, I think. Yep. Yes. And they've since released um, a third Care plans. One. Care plans, that's right. And then the fourth one that's been released is for SEO. And this is how to offer basically SEO as a service to your clients. Be you an agency, which is maybe a bit more like how, uh, how I sit where we've got a number of staff, or as a, a more independent person like you on your side of the pond, Kyle, just over there, um, where you're, you're kind of more of a, a single bloke or a single person doing their own thing. And um, yeah, how, you know, how you can sell that into uh, to, to your existing list of clients. So, have you, have you had a look at the, the SEO stuff yet? What, what do you think of it? Yeah, so I actually got it all set up yesterday. Um, I went through and, you know, my thing is, you know, they're set up to where you can actually download them from your account, put them on your website. You know, the claim is under an hour. I did a video and did it in 27 minutes. So uh, oh, in under... So 
under 30 minutes, you can take the stock stuff and it's ready to go. Um, yeah. You know, for me as a designer, I want to change the design of everything, you know, so <laughs> I tried to customize them as much as possible, but I kind of customized the things that fit well to me. So I made the, the design of the lead magnet different. Um, I made the landing page different, but I kept all the emails like exactly what they were because that was a part I didn't want to spend time on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so the SEO one's really good and I actually have uh, what I'm going to be doing with it, besides I, I put it on my resource library, I've posted it on social media this morning. Um, I don't have it as like a call out anywhere on my website right now, but I have two things that I'm planning on doing. One is uh, I have a couple old blog posts that talk about SEO. So I'm going to go back and put these in as a little call out for like a, a, like an added bonus to that post um, so that I can, any traffic that goes to that post, they can go into that funnel. So that should help that post do a little bit better anyways. And then the second thing is, is I want to keep this very handy for when I first start talking with new customers because a lot of the businesses that I'm dealing with here don't understand SEO, right? So, uh, you know, I had one customer in particular, um, <clears throat> his whole purpose of getting a website was organic search rankings. So we put some thought and purpose into that, but at the same time, he wasn't spending 10 grand on, you know, me doing a, a whole lot of work for him. Um, so we launched the website and like three days later, he's like, I thought you said this was going to do well. Like I can't find it anywhere on Google. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's been three days. You're going to have to give it a little time. Uh, and maybe after a week or so, he came back again and he's starting to get pissed at this point, like I've swindled him. And so when you get to that point with a customer and they think that you're swindling them, any effort you make to explain to them how you're not swindling them makes you sound like a swindler. Like anything I said just it was like digging my hole deeper. So finally, his page started ranking. He's a happy guy now. But I want to use this at the beginning of some of those conversations where it is if the customer does have a need for that organic rankings, which most of them do, hey, I'd really like to get you to go through this guide so you can understand what that entails because it does a good job of breaking down, uh, you know, what is search engine optimizations like the first intro piece, um, talks about keyword research. It talks about what your existing rankings are if we're taking an existing page and, and editing it or redoing it. it talks mm -hmm. about on-page SEO, local SEO, uh, and content creation. So I think it's kind of like the, the big points of, of SEO, especially from the standpoint a customer is going to understand. So putting this into my customer's hands before we ever like set some real expectations, I think will be helpful to avoid that scenario. Yeah, you're dead right. The, the thing is, SEO, now our agency, sort of about, uh, what, about 40-ish percent of our revenue, um, our, um, our annual revenue, comes from recurring SEO retainers or digital marketing retainers. So the thing, we've sold SEO quite a lot. And the, the problem you get in selling SEO, particularly to a brand spanking new cold client, is that it is an ongoing relationship. So not only are you sort of having to try and make the sale, but you're also trying to convince the client at the other end that, hey, you know what? Not only are you going to give me 10 grand over the next year, but you're also, we are going to get on and you are going to enjoy this. And this is, you know, we, we have the systems and processes in place to make this work for you. So often the, the majority, the vast majority of the SEO retainers that we've sold have been to existing clients where they've placed a project with us and by placing the project, the project is far lower risk. It's, you know, it's a one-off fee or, or maybe, maybe a couple of payments, but it's a one-off thing. And then off the back of that, you, they, you know, the client already trusts you. It, it comes down to that no like, and trust. They already know you. They know how you work. They know the, the way that your team is set up, be that you as an individual or me with different personnel. They, they like the process that you have in place. They like the end result of, I don't know, the web page that you've made or the landing page that you made or whatever it might be. Um, and they trust that your, your advice is going to be right. So you've already ticked those three things off. But then you, it's then you're in a far better place to start selling SEO and to start working on that, that monthly recurring thing. The, the barrier, though, that you've got to, to overcome is twofold. One is SEO isn't a quick game. And um, 
uh, it, that I think there's a big misconception around that from sort of people that don't necessarily understand how it works because surely when, you know, if you want to find out about, I don't know, how to change a tire on your car, you Google it and you find the answer in seconds. So if, if you can find stuff on Google in seconds, why can't you appear in Google in seconds? And right. the reality is that, you know what, there's so much competition out there. The Google bot has such a hell of a job to do that it, it takes its time to do that. Even when the Google bot's finished, it's then got to go through an indexing pro. You know, it's not a straightforward process once you've got the stuff on your website or the links coming in or whatever it is you're doing. So that's the first thing, that, that's the first hurdle you've got to cross. And this, the second hurdle is to understand that you, it's not just a right where you get it right the first time and that's it, SEO is fixed. SEO is an ongoing thing to do with relevancy and user experience and authority. So you need to keep on plugging away at those things. And that, that, that's a good point to say you need your customer to understand that before they're in the middle of it because that's one of the points where he thought I was really crazy when I'm like, well, not only are you paying me now and not seeing, me, seeing any results yet, you're going to have to pay me forever to keep this train moving, you know, which you know, made me sound insane. You know? so, yeah. So, you know, and that, that's actually where this funnel pack in particular starts to tick the boxes. And, uh, you know, I, I've run things... Um, to, to try and alleviate that before funnel packs came along. So I wrote a, a five-day email course about how SEO works, how to SEO a page, that kind of thing. I've done blog posts. I've done, um, I've even created a, a, an actual paid for course in it. So um, the, you know, I've done a lot of stuff around how you actually sell SEO, but there's, there are these hurdles that the client needs to understand. And I suppose that's what makes this funnel pack may be slightly different to the three that have come before it. Cause the other three have been, you know, buy a website from me or, you know, sign up for $20, uh, not $20, $50, $80 a month, whatever it is for maintenance or, you know, um, th those kind of things where this one's actually look, we can transform your business, but it's going to be a bigger investment. It's going to be over a period of time. And there's this stuff you need to understand before you start right. taking it on. It's, it's the educational part of it that, is is so important and it's hard for us to do you know you you can't sit and if you want to work with 50 new clients this year you can't sit down and educate each one of those 50 clients one by one one-on-one -on -one with them and still get everything done you know you yeah. need a way to be educating these clients without having to do it every time yourself and this is super helpful for that yeah, you're dead right the the other thing is of course because uh, and, and this this is just the way that selling stuff goes when it comes to value you know most people will take longer to consider a purchase that is of greater value than they will a purchase that is of lesser value there's always going to be exceptions to the rule you're always going to get people that are going to say yeah i'll give you 10 grand a month don't worry about it and you'll always get people that will say you know that will pontificate over giving you 500 bucks for a chain you know for uh, i don't know a new website template or whatever a template sure. website. so you're always going to get exceptions to the rule but normally the higher the value the more um, the more consideration is going to go into that purchase. And that's why this funnel pack in particular, I think works really well. I really like the sequence of emails. I think they, they take the user on a good old journey through um, sort of the, the, the lead magnet. The lead, the lead magnet's great. You know, I'm not, I'm not knocking the lead magnet, but I think actually there's some additional value that's in the emails, which when you look at the other funnel packs, they do take you on a journey and they do build on the lead magnet, but they, they don't, because they don't have to, they don't necessarily go into as much depth. Whereas with the, these emails, you actually can see the building blocks building. And as somebody that works in SEO all the time, you know, hey, I wish all my customers before I onboarded them knew everything that is in those emails because yeah. it would make my life so much easier. <laughs> and that's the thing. If people haven't, if people haven't bought any funnel packs yet, um, the, the, way, the way it typically works is you have this, this PDF lead magnet and it has different pages covering different topics. And then you have a sequence of emails and most of those emails kind of follow the topics uh, as yeah. far as uh, each subject that's in the PDF, they just go into some additional detail. Um, but what's nice about the emails is they're not just copying and pasting the information from the PDF into an email. You know, it, it goes into 
asking them questions, trying to get them to engage, uh, giving them direction on how they can go do this on their own website or giving them tools and resources. And, and Matt's been really conscious about trying to give people as many uh, free tools as they can use, as long as they're good free tools. You know, there's some that you just really need a paid, a paid service to do some of these things for you, but uh, just really actionable things you can get your customers to do. So like you said, you know, in the funnel shape, some of them are dropping out as you go through those emails, but the ones that come out on the other side are going to be so highly qualified for you. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot easier to land those jobs. Should we go on to the, the, the number five uh, one we came up on our list today? Go for it. All right. So this is one that I've struggled with for a while is I get a lot of views and, and maybe this is part of my location, um, but I get a lot of views, a lot of hits, uh, people looking for directions for some reason off of my Google, my business listing. So when they get directions, they actually end up at the UPS store uh, and they call me and say, hey, I'm standing in front of the UPS store and I can't find your office. And I said, well, look at that little box in there, number 208, that's my office. Um, but anyway, so I, I get a lot of action on my Google, my business listing. Um, and Google, because they're, you know, the God of the internet, they want you to use this Google My Business listing. In fact, I've seen some things recently that talk about going in and editing your description often, which seems crazy to me, but, uh, you know, they want you to be interacting with this Google listing. And I figure the more ways you can please Google, the better for you. Uh, so one of the features they have in there is the post, which is kind of like a little mini blog post. Um, so what I've been doing for the last three weeks is taking my funnel packs and turning them into a Google My Business post. So I'll use my social share image that I've already created and put that as the cover image on the post. I'll take the content from the uh, landing page and paste that in as the body of the post. And then, you know, it's not all of it, but, you know, a good part of it to make them interested. Uh, and then a link directly to the landing page. So um, last week, uh, those posts, I think, only stay up for a week and then Google reminds you that it's about to expire. Uh, but last week, I did the care plan funnel pack uh, as a post on Google My Business and I had 22 clicks onto the page and I had two people sign up to my funnel, uh, which isn't a huge number, but that's two people that otherwise would have never been introduced to it at all. Um, and I'm also getting the side benefit is I'm keeping content fresh on my Google My Business listing, which I know Google likes anyways. So the more ways to please them, the better. Hey, look, that's another way of looking at that is that's a 10% um, opt-in rate for, uh, you know, for your funnel. So it, it's, if, if you have a 10%, so we normally work to, um, we normally work with a 50% close rate. So in, in those maths, you, you know, if you, if you were sat on my side of the desk, I'd be thinking, right, yeah, one of you two is going to sign up. You can pick yeah. which one it is, or both of you can do it, but one of you two is coming. Uh, so, you know, I think that that's also just a really good way. Look, the, the reality of it is, is that anything you can do that is going to spoon feed something to Google is always a good thing to do. The Google bot has so much to worry about that it, you know, it takes its time. It's got, it doesn't always get things right first time. The whole, the whole process of organic seo is essentially it's a bit of a shakedown so anything you can do that spoon feeding that you know ogleweb.com is is active on google that the the, the your website is keep being updated with fresh content regularly that all of that content is around a particular cluster or niche or niche depending on where, how you want to say it um you know in terms of a theme that's going to start building your authority yeah to see that links are coming in from different places that's going to help so i you know the funnel pack actually covers a lot of the stuff that i've just mentioned there but actually you're you're killing a number of birds with one stone just by spoon feeding something to google and what funnel packs has done in your case is they've just given you the stuff to to put straight on there what more do you need yeah and you know that's something this a little off funnel packs but you know you as an seo person i've noticed um the more and more i've been active on my website and updating making new landing pages making new call outs to those landing pages you know my plans to go uh, update old blog posts and keep that content fresh. I'm seeing now when I do publish new content on my website, it's getting indexed so 
quickly because yeah. I've already built up that authority with Google and now it just makes it 10 times easier. So when I go back to working with a customer who might have a brand new domain, I'm like, God, this takes forever. Why is this taking so long? You know, cause I do stuff on my website and Google's like, yeah, of course, let's push that out there. That's great. You know, so anything you can do to help that along is, is awesome. I've kind of just lucked into it. It's not like I'm some genius. It's just happened and it's been great, but uh, this will definitely help you get there with more of a plan than I came up with. <laughs> so now if, if you're watching this and you've not heard of funnel packs before firstly i want to ask you where the hell have you been and secondly um you might want to know how it works so there uh, basically there there is a um an offer whereby you can buy a number of packs uh, it's currently 10 packs for the founders offer i know that does have a a, a lifetime on it and it's going to reduce to five um, but the, the, so you, you can either sign up to a single pack or a bunch of packs and you get a discount off them. And um, you then get an access to the dashboard and you get all of the resources you need. So you get the, you get the PDF download, you get the sales page copy, you get, uh, and that I should say, you also get the templates for the sales page, which are currently in uh, Beaver Builder, Elementor and Divi. So if you're using one of the main WordPress theme builders then or page builders, then you get the, the results the resources for that. You then get um, all of the sales email copy. You do have to go and find the, um, the email provider yourself. Uh, although there are um, uh, videos to explain how to do it in MailChimp, which is free, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, and MailerLite, you use MailerLite, don't you? Is I use actually both. So I have a bunch of old funnels and things set up on uh, MailChimp. So mm -hmm. Google's still on MailChimp. So every time I have to do that, I'm just too lazy to like get them all redone. Uh, but all my new properties process. have been on MailerLite. Okay, cool. So, um, so you get you get all the sales copy. You then you can just copy and paste it in. There's also videos to show you how to set those automations up in uh, Mailchimp and MailLite, uh, and then you get the sales page. Uh, well, you, you, in in certain cases you get the sales page copy. In other cases, you simply get like a consultation email. So it depends on the pack as to what the action is going to be. The new SEO pack uh, that works through to a consultation email because you know. It, somebody purchasing ongoing SEO in reality, they're not going to do that online. That is going right. to be a person-to-person -person type purchase. So it's then getting to the point of arranging that personal contact. Yeah, and so, I just link it directly to my booking page. So, you know, yeah, that was an easy email to fix up. Sh schedule a call. Schedule yeah. a call with me. Click. There you go. Happy days. So that's, in a nutshell, that's what it is. Individual packs are priced at $97. So if, you're, if you've not done this and you are thinking about it, um, look, it's $97. If you're in the UK, you're watching this, that's about, well, it's about 97 quid because we're going through Brexit. But no, okay, it, it's, about, it's about 75 quid, whatever it is. So it's, you, there's a, a low cost of entry to this, a low risk if you want to go and try it out. And I know that Matt has in certain instances where people have gone and tried one or two funnel packs, he has then allowed them to upgrade to the, um, uh, to the founder offer for, for just whatever the difference is. So yeah. feel free to go and... Um, uh, and, and check it out. There is also then this awesome community uh, on Facebook. We, we've, if you sign up to the Founders Pack, you also get a T-shirt, which Kyle has just over there. Mate, you're wearing the wrong T-shirt. I mean, okay. you know, we, we, we were trying to do a professional review here and you didn't even wear the right clothes. I mean, right. what, what, what the hell? Set up in the background. <laughs> so that, that's more than I did. Um, so uh, yeah, so you, you can go get your free t-shirt. Um, but uh, ultimately, we just, you know, we, we, as I said, we were going to record something that was to do with something completely different. And we just wanted to encourage you guys that if, if you're considering doing this, or if you haven't got funnels currently set up for your agency, for your business, then actually there's a low cost of entry to this and it is really, really good. And that's not us being, um, you know, over the top because we're not, you know, uh, be, because we're, we're wanting to support anybody in particular. It's just that we have found serious value in what is out there and we, we want to shout it to the world because frankly, it, it, you're missing out if you're not using it. Yeah, man, so many things run through my mind. I'll try to be brief so we can wrap this up. Uh, I will say the the founders deal, I think, ends at the end of May. Uh, yeah. I don't know that I said this out loud to Matt, or maybe I said it somewhere. I can't keep track of things I say. I talk too much. Um, 
<laughs> but when he first started telling me about this, um, actually, I was the first one to ever buy funnel packs because I made him give me a link to send him money. It was before there was a website or anything. Uh, I think he just sent me like a PayPal link and I sent him money before there was anything involved. And I honestly thought, and this is the truth, I don't need 10 lead magnets. I don't need 10 funnels. That's ridiculous. Why would anybody need 10? Um, so my goal was to have two and I could use both of those and that's good. The minute I got the first one and realized all these different things I can do to it, I'm like, I don't want 10. I want all of them forever. Um, because you can use these in so many different scenarios. Sure. The, the resource library is cool where you have them all on there, but you can just target so many different people for so many different things. So, you know, I would encourage you if you don't have any, go get one and check it out, but I'm almost positive you'll want more than that when it's done. So definitely the time to do that is before uh, the founder's deal is over. And then um, the last thing, the next one that's coming out is actually uh, on his list um, is a funnel pack for building funnels for customers, which I think is super exciting and a little bit meta. Uh, and I, I'm really excited about the fact that I can I can show my customers how this can work for them because I think funnels are a super um, profitable thing you could sell for people. Go ask Mike Killen or uh, Dave Foy or whoever you want to ask. Uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of money to be made here, but there's a lot of customers that don't understand what a funnel is. Uh, so I think that's going to be a really cool one and I'm, I'm looking forward to having that on my site. Yeah, no, you're dead, you're dead right. And the, the, I, I know what you mean about the whole, you know, um, why am I going to need 10 funnels? The one thing we should be completely clear about is that Funnel Packs did launch with two funnels. It's now got four in it. They've got something like 17 on their wish list. But what they did for the uh, early adopters was they gave them the list of the upcoming Funnel Packs and people could vote on them. So they're now releasing them in the order of which basically popularity from most popular to least popular of those uh, remaining well, there's now 13 left, isn't there? So, um, or the remaining 15 from launch. So that that's the order that they're being released. If you do purchase even just a single funnel pack, you will um, be invited to join the Facebook group. And in there, there's details about how the um, how the packs are being released, the order that they're coming, when the release dates are. I know that they initially said that they wanted to release one every two weeks. However, um, they then put another post up saying, look, we can push these things out, but we can make them a lot better if we have potentially a little bit more time in certain cases. So I, I know that some, some of the time scales aren't necessarily every two weeks, but they're, they're near enough, near enough makes yeah. a difference. So look, there'll be links to how to get to funnel packs in the comments above this post. Um, Kyle and I have specifically done this this way. It's not being branded for the pod, marketing development podcast. It's not being branded for tab. Um, it is just, it's, you know, it's the two of us just talking about something that's really helping us in our agency. And we just wanted to spread, spread the word out there and we'll push it out into our groups. Of course we will, but actually Matt and Mel, we just think you've done a fabulous, fabulous job and people need to know about it. So, um, we hope you're still standing and we hope you're not cringing too much. If you, if you, Matt and Mel, let us know if you've got to this point in the video, because if you've watched for what, 35 minutes or whatever it is now, then, then you, you know, you're, you're a better person than I am. Cause I, somebody was talking about me. I wouldn't have watched this far. That's no, no chance. So, yeah. um, Mate, I, I don't know. I don't really know how to wrap this up because this was completely Pete and Kyle unscripted. There's an idea for a show. There is. Ah, oh, Pete and Kyle unscripted. Un unscripted and unpaid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, that, that's true. That's true. So um, <laughs> anyway, mate, it's been, it's been great talking to you. If you um, ha already have funnel packs and you want to add to this conversation, stick it in the comments. If you haven't got funnel packs and you buy it because of this conversation, also put that in the comments. That'd be great if you could do that. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, like you said, shout out to Matt and Mel because they've done a fantastic job. And, you know, I originally met Matt because he just uh, helped me do things just just because he's a nice guy uh, and he has loads of experience and, and, and he's taken that same attitude towards funnel packs and he's given people all kinds of help and one on one and, and everything. So uh, not only is it good to get something awesome, it's really good to support somebody that really uh, gives back to the community. So I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And he did. Um, we have both had him on our respective shows. He, um, I purposefully didn't go into the whole uh, personal journey that he's been on when he was on the podcast, simply because 
because I didn't want to make him cry. And I don't really work well with men that are crying. It's I don't just, either. You know, I, that, that, that's, that's not kind of my comfort zone. So uh, I didn't go there, but I, I know uh, you had him on your show and he, he did get a bit emotional at times because he, he has been on one hell of a personal journey. Um, and this, you know, this is him giving something back to the, the community that has supported him through so much over the last five or six years. So um, guys, uh, big kudos to you both. Um, this is Pete and Kyle signing out.